Usually when a new top of the line mini PC comes out, I'm like, woo! I like computers that are small and go fast. But when Minis Forum sent me the email about the MS-02 Ultra, the computer I have right here, I didn't know what to think. It looked freaking huge and had specs so bananas, I didn't even know how to make sense of them. Dual 25 gigabit on a mini PC? Is this even mini anymore? I have so many questions and hopefully today we're gonna get answers to some of them because this thing, even though it is confusing, seems to be an absolute monster. Oh, hey, that's actually not as big as I thought it would be. Don't you dare. Okay, okay. They've got the computer in there, got some foam, got the accessory pack right here. Man, hold on, hold on a minute. Ooh, it's aluminum. Is this not the same size as the MS S1 Max, which is their AMD Strix Halo powered machine? Let me go get it and see. I mean, they've got similar vibes, but the MS02 Ultra here is, ow, ow, huh? Definitely bigger. It's not even the same profile. This thing is an absolute chonk. But this video isn't about the MSS One Max. This is about the new boy in town, the MS02 Ultra. In keeping with the Minis Forum naming convention they've had going for a little bit here, the MS-0 series is Intel-based, which is pretty interesting. I've definitely been riding that AMD-powered mini PC train for a while now. AMD has been absolutely dominating the CPU game. So to see something with an Intel chip again is definitely new. What's inside of here is a Core Ultra 9 285HX, a 24 core processor. Holy crap. It should be a very fast CPU that is definitely competitive with its AMD counterparts, but what would be the point in releasing a machine that is exactly as fast as our AMD one, but just Intel? It could be just so they have an Intel option, but no. <laughs> Not just that. This machine has some specs that are pretty new for a minis forum. For instance, those 25 gigabit ports I mentioned earlier. These are dual SFP28 Intel powered, naturally given it's an Intel CPU, they're gonna use an Intel NIC. We've also got an HDMI 2.1 port that of course supports high refresh rates at high resolutions. We've got 40 gigabit USB 4 type C, which supports DisplayPort alt mode and 15 watt power delivery. We've got a 2.5 gig Intel NIC, a 10 gigabit Realtek NIC for some reason. I don't know, those chips are cheap, so I guess it makes sense. And then three 10 gigabit USB type A ports. This for a mini PC is an insane insane amount of IO. This for any PC is an insane amount of IO. But what you'll also notice back here is the fact that there's PCIe slots, not one, but also two more. And those aren't just for show. That's a PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot in a PC this small. I also like that it's got feet on the bottom and the side. So if you wanted to have this as like a little home theater PC or under your monitor, that works. Or you can have it up like that. Pretty sleek. In the accessory pack, we've got propaganda as usual, an HDMI cord, love to see that. And then a standard C13 power cable that looks to be about a length. Is this not a key switch puller? I'm not really sure about that one, but it also comes with an M.2 heatsink or two, presumably if you get a bare bones, the screws for mounting the M.2s, and then whatever this is. There's also a few things on the front like dual 80 gigabit USB 4 V2 ports that also support DisplayPort output mode, another 10 gig type A, and a combo audio and a power button. But what's really interesting, of course, is the inside. We just pop those two screws off there and then, sir, hello? Oh, it's, oh, it's coming out. Wow. Oh my God. This entire section here is the CPU cooler. What the fuck? I mean, I knew this was a high power chip. You can run this in a system up to a 160 watt. This is only spec to go up to 140 watts. I mean, I say only. Now, as for what else is inside the machine here, we can see the 25 gigabit network card here, a 300 watt. It does look like a standard Flex ATX power supply in there, which does, as I'm sure you were hoping, have an eight pin PCIe power connector over here. Now, in terms of what cards you could put in here, there's not a ton of options. If you're into AI stuff, there's the RTX 4000 ADA SF which does fit in this machine. I tried to buy one to throw in here, but they are out of stock in my entire country, apparently, and also 2,000 Canadian dollars. So, and now that we're in here, of course, the PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot, but also a PCIe Gen 4 by 4 slot. That's a lot of expandability. Now the CPU only has 24 lanes. The way that these all get allocated is a little confusing to me. We're definitely using some PCIe lanes for the network card up here. This is a PCIe Gen 
Gen 4 by 12 slot. Apparently, it's bifurcated by four by four by four, which means you can have three PCIe Gen 4 by four devices connected to it. And that's because this network card isn't just a network card. It's also a carrier card for two of the four M.2 SSDs that you can install in this machine. 32 terabytes of M.2 SSDs that you can put in this thing. That's crazy. Almost as crazy as spending hours on code review instead of using today's sponsor, Code Rabbit. If you're into programming like me, you'll know that while AI has us writing code faster than ever, the one thing that hasn't really sped up is reviewing it. Thankfully, CodeRabbit aims to get you reviewing pull requests in half the time with half the bugs nearly instantly by automatically summarizing code changes into an intuitive walkthrough, integrating with 40 plus open source quality and security tools, and providing you context-aware improvement recommendations based on your entire code base. It even helps with dependencies, but it doesn't stop there because CodeRabbit CLI takes that AI powered code review goodness and brings it directly into the terminal. That way it can help you find bugs without breaking your flow. It integrates seamlessly with the tools you're already using like Claude Code, Cursor CLI, and other AI coding agents. It can hand off review context to your coding agent to automate fixes right in the terminal, create review guides and summarize changes in your repos, and learn from your feedback, all to help you review faster. And best of all, their free tier has real value. So you can try CodeRabbit without paying a dime and see for yourself why it's the number one AI powered app in the GitHub marketplace at the QR code on the screen or at the link down in the description. Now, given the size of this machine, I kind of wish it had U.2 SSD support, but I'll forgive them a little bit purely on the basis that this machine also has not two, but four SODIMM slots. So you can install 256 gigabytes of DDR5 ECC memory, or non-ECC if that's more your jam, which is really cool, save for the fact that DDR5 memory is f***ing a f And if you're interested in the MSO2 Ultra or some very expensive DDR5 memory, I'll have links down in the description where you can check out both of those things. If you already have some DDR5 sodium memory or you're able to get a bit of a deal, you can buy the MSO2 Ultra as a bare bones, so no storage, no memory, but the unit they sent me came with a one terabyte Gen 4 SSD. You can see there, it's a Kingston drive. And we've also got a Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 module back here that is socketed. And then like most other Minis Forum PCs, we've got a fan to help keep all of the stuff back here cool. Now, how do I get into the rest of this thing? I wanna see, I need a screwdriver. A screwdriver. I need a screwdriver. There we go. Now we can see the spicy bits, sort of. The rest of the RAM is, under here somewhere. Is there multiple screws? I think I need to take the network card out, so let's start with that. Ooh, that's custom. Oh yeah, there we go. Now I can get the RAM out. One more screw. And I can take the little RAM heatsink off. Hello? Oh no, RIP, <laughs> crucial, so dim. So this system's got 64 gigs of 5,600 mega transfers per second CL46 that you won't be able to buy anymore soon. And then, oh my God, heat pipes like that, holy <laughs> And here's the low profile actively cooled, extra long, Intel powered 25 gig network card also carries M.2 SSDs. You can see the little hold down screws right there. This is a really clever design. Those are really small screws. Part of me thinks that because these are so small, these aren't the screws I'm supposed to be taking off, but that's later Jake's problem. And honestly, like kind of screw that guy. He gets tax refunds from current Jake. He gets, uh, well, you know, he does get, he does get, he does get food poisoning sometimes from current Jake. Oh God, that feels wrong. That's what she said. Wow, that is a heck of a lot of cooling in there. Holy macaroni. But where do the SSDs go? Oh, 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 I didn't even need to take that part off. You know, there is a universe in which I could have checked the manual. It is not this one. Pretty cool, huh? What does that say? Is that an Intel chip? Who the fuck? It's an Intel E810 based 25 gig card. These lanes are so weird. You see how like the middle is missing right there? I'm pretty sure they're using 4X gap, 4X. 4X, it's kind of weird. Let's put it back in this computer and turn the damn thing on. We're gonna go zoom, zoom, baby. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Why do I have extra screws? And then it just slides back in there. Kind of like so, screwy, screwy. And time for power. I remember, I remember when I lost my, I don't have a monitor.
Does that make me crazy? It's alive! You can fit so many processing cores in this bad girl. Windows 11 Pro, wow, very exciting. Mm, yeah, very cool. Let's see how fast she goes. It's got the drivers for our 10 gig already. I don't have 10 gigabit internet, but we're gonna do a speed test anyways. Mm, look at that, Those so you can fit so many gigabits in this bad girl. It's a bit noisy, not too bad, but it's definitely there. We've got 64 gigabytes of memory as we thought before. Curiously, only at 4,800 mega transfers per second, even though those are 5,600 mega transfer per second sticks. Why don't we run Cinebench 2024? Everyone's favorite benchmark, super fast to run, takes no time at all. That's a lie. Pew. And there we go, just under 2,000 points in Cinebench 2024 multi-core and 134 in the single core. It's not quite like full-size desktop territory in terms of performance, but we're definitely getting close. But let's move on to Passmark performance test. This is one of my favorite benchmarks because it gives you a really good baseline for a bunch of different metrics on the computer. You can test your CPU, 2D graphics, performance, 3D graphics, memory, disk benchmarking, all that sort of stuff. But also because they have a massive data base of all of those different scores over literally millions of entries. So not only can you compare your system to other computers that have the same specs, but you can also compare your system to say the desktop equivalent CPU if you're testing a laptop or I don't know, like a hundred thousand dollar server CPU, whatever you want, man, it's all there. Let's try it. Boom. Wow. 62,000. It's actually faster than a 14900KS in both single-threaded and multi-threaded. That's hefty. But not only that, it's also beating out their flagship 16-core kind of mobile laptop chip, which is the 9955HX3D, a really stout processor, and both the 7950X and 7950X3D desktop chips. As for our graphics score, well, the integrated graphics is more for watching YouTube videos and doing some basic stuff. It is not a gaming chip by any stretch of the imagination, unless of course you were to install a small form factor GPU, which you definitely can. Not only can you install that RTX 4000 ADA, like I mentioned earlier, but you can also get an RTX 5060 low profile from I believe Asus and Gigabyte. Both of those are somewhat readily available and fit and are supported in this machine. You do have a slightly lower power power limit on the CPU when you're running something like that, but you should still get a ton of performance in this very compact chassis. It's been like five minutes and we're creeping up to like 82 degrees? It's registering about 50 decibels roughly from the seating distance with it sitting right next to me. It definitely makes some noise when it's absolutely ripping on the CPU. I will say the framework desktop with the Ryzen AI 395 Max is much quieter than this. I do want to see, however, if we can um, tell it to go a little faster for a little bit longer. I can adjust it. Okay, what if I just set the PL limit one to 140 and what if I set the PL limit two to 160? I'm also curious to see if it supports virtualization because that was a huge sell for the previous generation MSO one. We got virtualization, woohoo! You know what, I'm gonna set the power limit to 160 watts, which from what I understand is the max power limit of this CPU normally, which means it should be able to just full send at like 160 degrees until we hit the thermal limit rather than a power limit. I didn't see any memory settings in there, so I think what they said is true. You cannot run XMP on any memory, regardless of if it's ECC or not, which for some people is probably a bit of a letdown, but also DDR5 is pretty fast. So buy something that's low latency if you can. Open up Passmark's burn-in test. Let's see if we light this thing on fire or not. 160 watts, yo! <laughs> it's thermal throttling almost immediately though. You know what? It's really not doing that great. It's pretty clear to me that this cooler can't handle the heat load I'm trying to throw at it. Now they're using supposedly a phase change thermal pad in this system, but it seems like the cooling solution is really not geared towards this much power draw because it'll jump up to like 120 watts for a second and then it freaks the f out. But if you're crazy enough to do some other sort of cooling solution, it seems like the motherboard will at least allow you to full send it if you can keep it cool. Okay, I had a fantastic idea for this machine. Ooh, yep. Sabrent, in their infinite wisdom, sent me a bunch of storage drives. I got uh, a couple of their eight terabytes and a couple of their four terabyte Rocket 4 Plus. And I'm thinking it's got 25 gig. So I guess I'm legally obligated to try this thing in TrueNAS with some NVMe storage, right? Like that's the law. The wife is looking at me like, I thought you said you were done filming. Get
I'm gonna install the eight terabyte drives on the back because on that 25 gig cards M.2 slots, apparently the max for gen four SSDs is four terabytes. So I suspect it's a power limit thing. But yeah, I'm just gonna listen to the instructions for once in my life and this has gotta be the coolest 25 gig network card I've ever seen. Oh God, I stripped the screw. Oh God, I stripped it more. Oh God. Now we've got eight terabytes in our 25 gig NIC. $4,000 computer maybe with all that storage in there. That's not bad. I swear to you, I will build like a sick NVMe NAS for myself. This is just me scratching that itch. Let me indulge people. Fly my child, yeah! Did I break it? This thing has post LEDs failing on VGA. Kind of weird to be honest, what does this do? I am so dumb. You see that HDMI cable that's not fucking plugged in? Oh my God, I'm so stupid. What doesn't kill you makes you strong. Oh, it's working. Now we can see how fast it goes. Is there no drivers for the Realtek 10 gig Nick that's in here? Fine, fine, we'll use the Intel card with a dongle. Well, then we'll have 10 gig. Still not connecting. Come on. Hello? Piece of shy. Oh, you're pretty, aren't you, huh? For TrueNessing. This is the first time I've used TrueNess on my own channel. For the uninitiated, TrueNess is the best. We're doing RAID 0 across all four SSDs, doing a write test with FIO or flexible IO tester. It's kind of an industry standard. One meg block size, 16 threads, and it's doing around 10 gigabytes per second. It's a bit slower, I feel like, than it should be. Each of these drives on their own can do seven, eight gigabytes a second write speed. Not forever, but don't get me wrong. It is still going very fast. I just feel like it could do more maybe. That being said, we've only got about six gigabytes a second of networking. What about read speeds though? Okay, okay, that's pretty fast. 17 gigabytes a second average read. I will give them that, it is, it is quite quick. And then with our four drives in RAID Z1, I was getting around 13 and a half gigabytes per second second read speeds and just shy of nine gigabytes per second write speed. Both of those are with 16 threads and one megabyte block size. So very fast. Now don't get me wrong, at 1200 US dollars, I'm pretty sure this is the most expensive minis forum system I have ever played with. I mean, excluding the ones that have like a dedicated GPU. The MSO one, which it's replacing with the 3900H has been like a 600 USD kind of system. So we're talking like double the price, but you're also getting more than double the CPU performance, a hell of a lot more expandability, more than double the networking, that's for sure. And it is worth mentioning that there's a cheaper variant with the 275 HX from Intel, which is also a 24 core, but that cheaper version doesn't come with the 25 gig card. It has two less M.2 slots. It doesn't support ECC or Intel vPro management. Still an insanely stout system. If you're just looking for CPU horsepower, that 275 HX is probably the way to go. And in the future, they're gonna be launching a 235 HX version with 14 cores, presumably for a lot less money, I would hope. However, those prices are for bare bones systems. So no Windows, no SSD, and no RAM, which, ugh, ridiculous. I mean, Mini's Forum will sell you 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD for $300. So at Mini's Forum pricing, you're, you're getting a free one terabyte SSD, baby. That's not bad, actually. And free Windows, which begs the question of if the rest of the system is a good deal. I mean, it's compact, which is something you usually have to pay for, but let's look at an ITX system with similar performance. Okay, this is like kind of a bit more complicated of an equation than I thought it would be. I spec'd out basically the same performance computer. I mean, technically it would be a bit faster with the 285K um, and maybe the CPU cooler is not quite enough. And then I looked on eBay for Intel 25 gig network cards. Seems like you can get them for around 200 bucks used and you're out a thousand US dollars, which is less for a computer that technically will Will probably be a bit faster, but it's also gonna be quite a bit bigger. But the other thing is you're also getting way less IO. It is proprietary, so you're not getting individually replaceable parts like you would on a normal DIY desktop. And if you want that, I can totally understand. But with all of that in mind, I think that it's safe to say that the Minis Forum MSO2 Ultra is a very stout system that is incredibly versatile. It can fill pretty much any role you throw at it in a very small form factor that seems to be priced pretty reasonably from what I can tell. It's uh, a very cool little computer.
So thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Get subscribed because like, bruh, why haven't you yet? And let me know down in the comments what you would do with the MSO2 Ultra. Would you build uh, the craziest home lab cluster ever out of a bunch of them? Would you run some AI on a GPU in there? Would you game on it? I don't know. I'm not buying any computers right now because the RAM prices are so fucking crazy. Holy shit. Uh